This is another Tascam DA88 with different problems than the one I looked at yesterday. And this one came in in pieces as the owner of it attempted to get into it and repair it himself and then realized he was over his head and called for professional help. So we're going to put this one back together and fix the problems it's got and get this one back up and running again. Coming up next. Try not to laugh too hard. This is how this DA88 was brought to me. It was, it came in with the other one, but the fellow that owns it thought he might take this one apart and try to remedy it himself. As you saw from the previous one, it is not necessary to take the front panel off or the side wings off or anything to get the drive out. But now I have a machine that's got the original fault. Plus I get the honors of putting it back together. And any other damage that may have occurred while it was being transported apart like this because, as you can see, it came with a bunch of screws in the bag and the drive was separate and everything was all stacked on top of each other and I already see that there's something that's bent here because this was sitting like this and the, the, uh, the cover was sitting on top of here and there was another machine that was stacked on top of that when it was brought in so I don't know if there's any other damage I don't know what's wrong with it at this point because it's in pieces I can assume that it's probably similar to the other ones but let's uh, see if we can make anything happen on this one I'm sure I'll get it going it's just that the servicer gets annoyed, let's say, when things are brought in in pieces. Because uh, I don't know whether there's any hidden damage. And that's the thing. Hopefully there's not, but again, we don't know. So I'm going to remove the deck and we'll, we'll treat it as a problem with the deck. And hopefully everything else is good. Like the prior one, it looks like this battery has been leaking. So the battery's got to go. That's the first thing. The battery has to go. I mean, all these batteries will be bad at this point. So... Anybody who's got one of these things here, you best to remove the battery. Uh, yeah, you could replace it if you really wanted to put the battery back in. Um, that would really only be necessary if you were recording something new on this and uh, you wanted the, the real-time clock to be correct. Other than that, there's not really any reason to put the battery back in. It's not needed, that's for sure. All it's going to do is leak, like they all do eventually and when they leak they can do some serious damage to the circuit board just like leaking capacitors so we'll get a toothbrush out and some isopropanol alcohol and uh, we'll clean that off there that part is clean Remove the well, where's the power where's the power button? He didn't maybe that's somewhere else. But anyway, undo that. Oh, the screws are all out on this as well. Wonderful. Oh, the circuit board's been removed behind here too. There's been screws removed. Oh man, so much stuff was removed that did not need to come out on this. And I do need to remove this plug here, so I do need to take out the screw and this one okay now the deck is out I can uh, deal with this because the problem is likely mechanical just like the last one and like the other one it's full of dust bunny so we'll blow this one out with the air uh, compressor first see I learned things on this one like for example removing this wire here first before remo attempting to remove the the uh, cassette housing just makes things so much easier to do this while it's still attached there see that makes that a lot easier to do that and of course remove these other two plugs that needs to come out 
That way I can just remove the four screws. Raise the cassette basket. It's in the down or halfway down position right now. So we'll just, that's the wrong way. Positive over to this one or negative to the red dot. Reverse the motor. And looks like this tape door might be damaged. It should be closed. Okay, it just wasn't, the spring wasn't in place. All right, now I can get to the screws to hold this together. Oh, that didn't have to come out. Get the loader out. We have to plug that one back in. It does not have to come undone. That's for the main loading motor for the mechanism itself. needs to be lubricated down here. I didn't show it on the other one where I did it, but you see this, the um, the uh, back tension post does get uh, gummed up. I did lubricate that one on the other one. It just, it got cut out of the video. So we'll do that right now on this one while I'm working on it. There's a cut washer that needs to come off. You could take this entire guide off, it's not necessary. It's just necessary to get it up high enough so that uh, some oil can be placed on top and under the guide so that it'll work its way in and lubricate the sticking guide post itself, or the, ar the guide arm. The, this is for the back tension. So it's normally pulled in place with a spring but it's completely seized up. The other one that I worked on wasn't seized up, so I didn't have to go to this degree. I, could, I was just able to uh, remove the cut washer and put a drop of oil on, and that lubricated that one because it wasn't seized up like this one. But this one, a little bit more work on this one. Just raising it up enough so that I can get a little bit of oil to go down into here, which will then lubricate it. Don't need much, just a drop. Also, we'll put a drop of oil on the underside of the shaft down here with it lifted up a bit, right down into here. And once we push everything back into place, the guide is now free, like it should be. We'll do that. The grease is pretty dry on the tracks here as well, so we're going to uh, 
lube them up a little bit as well. Clean these up and put a little bit of lubricant onto the, the rails here, which I've got on the, the end of this Q-tip. I've got some lubricant on here. We're going to unload the mechanism using, I'll unplug the power from the servo board to do this by the way, undo this plug and then we'll unthread the mechanism, we don't know which way it's got to go here so we'll just see which way, looks like that way, and if we load it the other way here, the voltage a little bit to 5 volts there we go This guide is sticking over here too. So we got to do this guide on this side. This one's frozen on this one as you can see. cup washer back on over here this one's freed up and this mechanism seems to be in a lot worse condition than the other one because the other one the guides weren't all frozen like this that's actually an indication that this machine probably had a lot less use than the other one and it's gummed up just from sitting around on now this one over here have to deal with this guy that's that's uh, sticking now it's got a spring on it So we're just working the oil into this pivot here to make this one free up. This one's also got the uh, the frozen
pendulum. So this one's called the pendulum gear because it, pend it swings back and forth. And hopefully that's all that's wrong with this one. So I'm just going to work at this for a bit and get this one free. Okay, that one's moving nice and free now. There's no spring on it to pull it back, that's why I'm having to move it. The spring is sitting over here. It, it, it's completely free on the shaft, as you can see. So now I can put the spring back on here and the, the uh, cut washer. Gotta pull the spring up on this side like that, and then and like that. That way it pushes it back like that. Oops, my spring popped out. Try that again. Now when I apply power, it should load and unload freely. Power has been reset to 3 volts for loading and unloading. Okay, so that's taking care of that one. Now we got to take care of this other uh, frozen pendulum arm. Remove the plate. I'm actually going to remove these right away so I don't have to worry about them falling out. washer there, gear, and the uh, stuck pendulum arm.
there's only one way that this comes off that's where there's a cutaway here on this little gear so you turn it around until that's like that so that you can remove the gear otherwise it won't come off so you turn it so that this is in line with the gear otherwise the gear won't come off very easily Should be in place almost. This one's not all the way down. Gotta get the the uh, back tension brake out of the way. It's gonna lift up above here. other piece back on without everything flying apart. There, I think the plate's in place now. the reels. That's what's supposed to happen. Okay, now I can put the cassette housing back on. The cassette holder, hopefully this is not damaged because the, uh, the, the weight of the other machine was sitting right on top of this when it was brought to me. flush, put the screws back in, then I can start to reassemble of the machine and see whether it works. Optimistic that it will work just fine. All right, time to plug the deck in and see whether it uh, does anything.
nice scare plug that's not going anywhere. I didn't unplug it. I wonder if that's anything or if there's just a free one that's just hanging there. I see this connector here that's got just two wires on it. Well, that was loose too. I'm curious as to whether any other plugs were undone when this when this was taken apart. That's why I hate it. I hate working on stuff that people have been into because I just don't know whether they've done some other damage. You know, there's other things that I'm not aware of that have been done to it before it got to me. You know the saying, right? You know, we probably saw this hanging in mechanic shop. Labor charges, 100 bucks per hour if you watch, $125 an hour if you help, $150 an hour. So true though, because anytime something's been taken apart by someone else, you don't know whether they've done any damage. And in the case of this, I don't know where this plug goes. If this doesn't look, if this doesn't work, I'm going to be opening the other one back up to see where this plug goes. Is it plugged in on this board here? I'm just going to take a quick look and see if something's been unplugged from the power board. Indeed, if we look way down here, it looks like there is a plug that's unseated, and that's probably where this plug came out of. So I'm going to take a guess and plug it in there. Hopefully I'm not going to create a problem because I'm, I'm going to assume that that's where that plug came from. I didn't undo it, so. Of all the awkward places to put a plug, Okay, 10 minutes later I get that plug installed. Hopefully it's in the right place. We'll get the deck back where it belongs. Should be screws here to hold this in place. Okay, this thing is now at a state where I should be able to turn it on. Hopefully there won't be any smoke or pieces flying out of it because uh, I think everything's back together. Let's power it up. Connect the power connector to the switch and plug it in. Well, it's lighting up, but uh, I don't think it's lighting up right. Houston, we have a problem. So, this is going to require a little bit more extensive work. Because um, everything's lighting up. Like all the lights, every light is lighting up as soon as I turn it on. This is what I was afraid of. I don't know whether there's something that's not connected. Or what the scoop is now. But guaranteed it's a hell of a lot worse than the other one. That maybe something got disconnected that I haven't spotted. Or some damage may have got done when it was taken apart. I don't know. I say this is the, this is the problem whenever you get any equipment that... Uh, somebody has been into before you just don't know where the uh, where the problem is so I'm back to square one I've got an I've got an electronic problem on here now so this will require more research I'm just going to remove the mechanism again and just make sure that everything's seated properly looks like everything's pushed in but I'm just going to push all these connectors in again make sure that every one of these connectors is properly seated because if it uh, goes through a self-diagnostics and one of the connectors isn't seated properly, it can cause 
all kinds of strange things when it's going through post. So let's just make sure that everything, and the fact that I had this sitting out like that after seeding them, when I was working on that other connector that was not in place, one of them may have worked its way loose. So I just reseed all the connectors. We'll put the chassis back in and uh, try to boot it up again. Make sure everything lines up. One more time, we'll try firing it up. Ah, that's a little better. A lot better. Hi, excellent. So one of those connectors must not have been properly seated. More than likely when I had the, the chassis sitting over here while I was fiddle farting around for 10 minutes to get that other connector plugged in that was undone. So I'll throw a, uh, a regular high eight tape in first just to make sure that the mechanism goes through the process and then we'll try the multi-channel tape and see what it does. So here's my my high eight tape. I'll put the camera right over top. Okay, well it's not eating the tape, but it's certainly kicking the tape out as soon as I install the tape. We'll try the actual tape, because it might read to see if there's a format on it. Ah. So it's, it saw the other tape had digital signals on it, but it wasn't at that tape. That's what it did. It booted the tape out because it read the tape to see whether it was a DAT format and saw that it had digital signals, but it was a videotape. And it booted it. So, um play which one is play i don't know which buttons play uh, maybe this one here nope maybe that one is that the one that might be play there let's see if i get any sound on this tape i've got it plugged into channel one which was the bass and i think channel four which was guitar so it's the tape counter is moving now it didn't start till it got to about the one minute mark I think we can call this one a success. Excellent! Done! Now I just gotta put this one back together. Ah, uh, stop. We're stop. I don't know which one's which. Rewind. I've had it playing here for a bit. So I'm put the front panel on this thing so I can make sense of what the buttons do. It's a lot more work getting these front panels on than it is taking them off because all the little lights have to be manually popped into place because they're all sitting high and you got to get them all lined up so that the front cover will pop on. I've been working on this now for, I don't know, 10 minutes and I still haven't got the front panel on. Top covers fastened. Uh, time to put the shield on for the electronics for the head.
So far, so good. Put the plastic cover over it next. The dust cover, as they call it. That just fits on like this. And the leaf blower is started. Well, this one's all back together. I don't know if we can do anything about this Q button because it's kind of broken. Can't get it to sit in there. Well, maybe if I set it right there and put some tape over it just to hold it in place, that might be all I can do on this because the back of the button's broken. So we'll just try that. I'll just try putting a piece of scotch tape over the front of the button here. Maybe that will try it without ripping the tape try that and see whether that'll hold the button in place and maybe the button will be usable maybe it won't but we'll we'll see we'll just stick a piece of tape over there sticky tape sometimes sticky tape helps things work and that appears to be the case here that uh, it will if you push it the uh, jog shuttle to how it works if you do that don't push the button Push the edge of the panel in. That'll work. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to stay like that. I don't know why that's deformed like that, but uh, uh, obviously something's not pushing it in quite straight, but uh, I've spent enough time on this machine. As it is, I've been on this one now for uh, about three hours. So um, I think I'm going to call this one a day. It's back together and it's working. Bot. There, bot. It's the bot machine. Anyway, unload. I think we'll go back to the... That sounds better. <laughs> That's got some grooves to it, that. Can handle that. Of course, if you play it to the end of the tape, you get the end of tape. EOT. I'm going to rewind this back to the beginning now and uh, call this one a day. It's always a good idea on all these machines to run a tape through them back and forth once in a while just to keep 
all the parts lubricated and moving and so forth. This one was gummed up far worse than the first one. The first one I did lubricate the uh, the uh, back tension and the other threading arm, but they were not seized as these ones were seized up completely. The other ones were not seized. So I put some oil on them, but I didn't have to take them apart to the extent of this one to get the oil in and get it working. Anyway, as you saw the tape counter there, about an hour and 50 minutes on a, on a tape. I would imagine if it's formatted at 48 kilohertz instead of 44.1, the recording time is probably less because it's going to spin the drum, I'm sure, faster. Now it slows down as it gets back to the beginning here. So it rewinds at a fast speed and then it slows down as it gets back to the beginning of the tape. There you go, beginning of tape, B-O-T, bot. Unload. Okay, this one's all done. Here's a few makeup shots for this just because I didn't show it the last time. On the back of the DA88, you've got remote sync in from the RC848 DA88 for controller sync out, a meter unit. That's for remote, uh, uh, remote monitoring, I would imagine. That's what that's for, remote uh, VU meters. Uh, TDIF 1, which is digital input output, that's what goes to the, the adapter. And then you've got your uh, conventional unbalanced 8 inputs and unbalanced outputs. You've got balanced inputs and outputs 1 to 8. And a remote control for the RC808 and the remote punch in. And then you've got your machine ID, which you can select here because you can have multiple machines that are synced together. And remember on the first video I said you could you could have two of these for 16 track. Well, you could have four of them for 32 track and I'm sure you could probably sync even more of them together and have virtually an unlimited number of recording tracks. If you want to have 48 tracks, no problem, just add some more. And each machine has its own ID. I don't know what the maximum number of these were, but I know a, a couple of small studios that people, that I, musicians I know, that use these in their home studios and they had two of them, but they only had 16 tracks. But uh, it's easy to add more. It was a modular system. Anyway, very nice little machine. And um, you've got, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of these out there. And they go for a song in most cases, unless you deal with eBay and then you're going to get screwed. But I digress. That's the way it is on eBay. But if you look around, you can find these things at bargain basement prices, quite often for free. Thanks for watching.